What's up guys, today I'm at Plants and Amita Plant Shop and I'm gonna turn this old fish tank into a bioactive terrarium. Before we go upstairs, we need some plants though. And over here, I've spotted the amazing Camaderia elegans, also known as the Parlor Palm. I've also found this wonderful Peperomia prostrata, string of turtles, one of my favorite terrarium plants. This wonderful fern is a Nephrolepis green fantasy. I've never used green fantasy before, but it's in the Nephrolepis genus, so it's sure going to work. And finally, we have the extremely fast growing Ficus pamela. Let's go make a terrarium. So this is going to make a perfect container for a terrarium for numerous reasons. First of all, it has an inbuilt light fixture. So this can be positioned anywhere in the home. Secondly, what I like about this is that it has a detachable lid, uh, but also there are air vents. So it's gonna have a nice amount of airflow in this terrarium. First thing I'm going to do is add a drainage layer. Now this drainage layer is actually Soil Ninja's semi-hydro mix, primarily used in hydroponics. It's made up of numerous materials, Lecker in there, there's zeolite. If you want a discounted bag of this or any Soil Ninja products, you can hit the link in my description. First thing I'm going to do is add a few centimeters into the bottom of our container. In we go. It doesn't really matter because it kind of doubles up as the substrate as well. Um, the plant's roots are going to find their way into here. Um, now the primary purpose of a drainage layer is to allow water from the substrate layer to flow into it. However, I feel it's more important to just not overwater in the first place. What I like about this drainage layer is that it creates an air pocket at the bottom of the terrarium. That's going to help the environment stay aerobic and it's going to help the plant's roots stay healthy. We've gone in with probably about an inch, maybe three centimeters or something and that's looking great. What I also like about this is that it's very light. It adds next to no weight to the terrarium. Add gravel into here then it can become very heavy. The next thing I'm adding is this Soil Ninja Terrarium Soil which is a very high quality product. It's made up of coir, worm castings, activated charcoal, sand, zeolite and bark. So it's a nutritious, well draining soil which is going to be great for the terrarium. Now I'm going to add a fair bit of this in because it's a large container. As always, I like to scape it so it's on a gradient. Now we're going to be higher at the back and lower at the front. And what this does is it allows more surface area to be visible from the front. So this is our front and more surface area is visible. When you make terrariums, that's a, a good little hack. So once that's in, I'm gonna give it water. Now, in this bottle, by the way, this spray container is absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend it. I'm gonna link the product in my description. Really good, it's filled with deionized water. Really important when you make terrariums that you do use good quality water because what's gonna happen is that water contains lots of chemicals and it's gonna build up in the soil, it's gonna stay in the glass, and to be honest, it's just the pain in the butt. Um, it can actually stop plants taking up nutrients. Get the water right and your plants are gonna be happy. I'm not watering it the whole way through. I've watered the soil and as you can see, it started to trickle down and it's really important. I'm using this light so you can see better. Uh, it's quite dark in here. You can see it started to find its way down into the drainage layer. Um, I'm not watering it thoroughly at this point. It's just keeping the soil in place. You need to be really careful when you water a terrarium. Next thing we're going to do is add some leaf litter. These are deciduous leaves and they're going to be of great benefit to the spring tails in this terrarium. They're going to rot down slowly, going to rot into the soil, going to feed the spring tails and they're just a great addition to your terrarium. These are like native trees to the UK, so we've got I think Quercus ilex, field maple which is Acer campestra, some beech. I'm just going to crumble some of this up, random stick. Um, and spread it on top of the soil. And as I said, it's gonna rot down slowly. I feel if you are making bioactive terrariums then adding a healthy amount of leaf litter is a really important thing to do. So, gone in with the leaf litter. Next, I have this wonderful cork bark. Cork bark is my favorite material to use in a terrarium or my favorite wood to use in a terrarium rather. Um, it's nice and textured. 
it doesn't rot or it takes a long time to rot and it's light it's a great material to use i'm going to use this piece because it's got some cave vibes going on and i'm going to place that i think just like that kind of weird planting terrariums back to front but i seem to do it a lot i'm gonna it seems quite central to me so i'm gonna place that like off center move this stick out of the way so the stick is also going to rot down slowly and the springtails will feed on it as it molds moss time i have some very nice looking moss here a type of hypnum it's been sat in front of a nice north facing window for the past few weeks and it's still lovely and green the reason why i'm putting this in now is because rather than covering the whole surface with moss um, moss is expensive um, if we put in the hardscape first go around that with moss it's just an economical way of using it i feel that this area the front bit is like the prime real estate of the terrarium that's where most of the moss is going to go it's really simple it's just it has no root system this is just being placed directly on top of the leaves and the substrate mosses take all of their moisture from above soil level and i just really think moss makes a terrarium it's one of my favorite things about terrarium building is the ability to grow moss now this is a temperate species of moss and which means it grows in temperate forests. i think this is from northern europe somewhere but it's a really nice species hypnum compressor form i believe it's called oh it's definitely a type of hypnum okay so I'm purposely not adding it at the back because you're not really gonna see it and I feel it would be a waste. Um, so our moss is in, plant time. So this is our Camadoria elegans. And I like this plant because it's kind of got some Victorian feel to it. What I'm gonna do is separate it so I don't make a mess. I'm gonna pop it on this tray. Each one of these is a single plant grown from a single seed. So in theory, we actually have probably like I don't know, 20 plants here, but I really want some of these taller ones and they're gonna sit at the back. Very carefully, just separating that. Now these plants are really hard. I've noticed that they can tolerate a wide range of conditions um, and they're perfect for terrarium, so win-win. Now, I'm gonna plonk this right at the back. And I'm going to plant it quite deep because it will poke out the top otherwise. And another great thing about this plant is that it's really easy to get hold of. It's a very common terrarium plant and it's cheap too. So I highly recommend using Camadoria elegans or the Parlor Palm in your terrariums, especially tall ones like this. Excellent. Right, next I'm going to go in with our Nephrolepis fern. And again, like I did with the Camadoria, I'm going to split this. Now, ferns like this are quite expensive, so I think they're about four pounds a fern. And you can get numerous plants out of this. So again, another economical way of using your plants. Divide the fern just like this, and like magic, you have two plants. It's also important to keep quite a bit of this root intact. Chances of the fern surviving are gonna be much higher. Uh, these also grow fairly large, so I'm gonna plant one, just next to the Camadoria, just like that. So that's gonna fill this space here and it will need pruning. And this one, I'm going to plant here. That's the front of the plant and that should be facing the front, just like this. Now we're into cutting territory. This is Ficus pamela and if you search Ficus pamela into Google, you will find uh, Ficus pamela eradication is one of the top searches because in Southeast Asia this takes over buildings. It's considered really invasive, um, but in this country, in our terrariums, it's just a fast growing terrarium plant. Now, rather than taking it out of the pot, I'm taking a cutting. So, just like this, I find a piece of stem with perhaps four to five leaves. I take a cutting just like this. And it's as simple as just placing it, the stem, into the soil or into the moss. Or you can lay it flat, just like this. And it will grow both, both ways. So I'm going to go in with perhaps three or four cuttings of the ficus. And I'm going to aim them so they're pointing towards 
the back. Um, if you point them towards the front, they're just gonna hit the glass. Oh, so that's Ficus pamela in. We have Peromia prostrata. It's not the healthiest plant, but once it gets into that humid terrarium, these leaves are gonna really plump up. So much like the ficus, I'm not gonna be taking it out of the pot. I'm taking a single cutting like this. And that's gonna be rested on top of the moss. Now this prime real estate area where my favorite plants are going to go, so I feel the Peperomia prostrata deserves center stage right there. And you can see why it's called string of turtles as a common name because each leaf kind of resembles a turtle. So again, just placing it on top of the moss, but in a few months time, you will have a baby Peperomia prostrata plant start to grow from that leaf. So another economical way of using plants. You'll notice that at the back there's some open soil showing and I think it's good practice to cover this. It's called a top dressing or a mulch um, and I'm going to cover this with some leaf litter. And this can slow down uh, the evaporation from the soil. I just feel it's good practice to cover open areas of soil. The springtails are really going to like this. So what I've got here because it's exceedingly cold in Worcester today, some springtails. Now, this tub I made in one of my previous videos, terrariums can become very stagnant places where mold and bacteria um, and fungus can form. Um, and what the springtails will do, they will consume those small outbreaks, preventing them from becoming large ones. Springtails are like the janitors or the cleanup crew of the terrarium. I'm gonna add a piece of this charcoal in there. Oops, so I'm gonna place this just around the leaf litter and I'm gonna put another one in there too. This white stuff on the piece of charcoal is actually yeast and that's what the springtails are gonna feed on. So this will provide a little extra food for them. So I'll place that just at the back. Now there's no chance the springtails are going to escape, especially in winter, uh, but even if they did, they would not survive long outside of the terrarium condition. The terrarium is nearly complete. What I'm gonna do is give it a final spray with some water love this spray bottle. Final spray so the moss is nice and damp. I'm going to give it a wipe down with this cloth. So I mentioned earlier what I like about this terrarium is that it has an inbuilt light so this can be positioned anywhere in the home. I'm just going to pop this lid back on top. Now you can see that there's quite a lot of space in this terrarium and I've purposefully not filled it with plants because it's going to give the fern, the camaderia, the ficus chance to grow and space to grow into. So this terrarium is complete and I'm really happy with how it looks. So we've reached the end of the video and if you'd like to support me further you can join my Patreon. I hold monthly online workshops and offer lots of cool perks like sending free plant cuttings to UK patrons, hangouts, shout outs on socials and direct plant and terrarium advice from me. You can also join my Discord and beginner friendly Facebook group where I've got a whole host of knowledgeable plant people generously giving their time. As always thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.